you have an event coming up tomorrow and you just realized you don't have a cake. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make your own beautiful cake for your party. Hi, it's Carolyn. I'm back with another video and if this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. And if it's your not, not your first time here, welcome back. I'm a professional cake decorator just outside of Philly. I've been decorating cake since 2002. And on this channel, I show you my tips and tricks and ways that I bake and decorate cakes to help you along your journey. So if you'd like to join me, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you can get notified whenever I release a new video. So it happens. Sometimes we plan parties and we forget to order the cake or the bakery cancels on you or whatever would happen and you realize you need a cake in a day or two and I'm going to show you how you can make one yourself pretty fast using another bakery's cake. So what I did, I went to the grocery store yesterday and I bought two round cakes. So when you go to the grocery store, you get these basic cakes with the buttercream decoration and flowers on it, but it doesn't look very exciting and you wanna bring something nice to your party with you. So I'm gonna show you how to turn these bakery cakes into a, a beautiful cake for your party. All right, so to start, I wanna first make the icing. So you're going to need two and a half sticks of butter, a half cup of shortening. I like to use high ratio shortening. I use Sweetex. You can also use Crisco. I prefer high ratio shortening because it has a better mouth feel, but you can use whatever shortening you have. Two pounds of 10X powdered sugar, and of course, Wilton Clear Vanilla, my favorite. It is a little difficult to find right now. I hope it's just because of Corona, but I love this stuff. I prefer clear vanilla so it doesn't change the color of the icing. So I just have my mixer with my paddle attachment here. I'm gonna add the two and a half sticks of butter and beat that on high for about 30 seconds. And then I'm going to add a half cup of shortening and mix that on high for about 30 seconds. I'm going to add the two pound bag of sugar. If you find that it's piling up too high on one side, just turn it on for a second and it'll help the sugar go down the bowl. And then I like to cover it with a towel so you don't get a huge poof a uh, cloud of sugar going everywhere so i'm just going to turn this on uh probably about 30 seconds and then start to add some water i just use this i know this is a coffee scoop but i use this as kind of like a tablespoon to add water depending on your environment it, it depends on how much water you're going to add if you're in a really humid environment you might only need two tablespoons if it's really dry like it is right here here right now in Philly, it's it's dry and cold, so I have to add about five tablespoons. So you just have to get it to the correct consistency. You don't want it too stiff, and you don't want it too liquidy. So now I added three tablespoons. I wanna check the consistency. I don't like to use a scraper blade. If you use a scraper blade, you can skip this step, but scrape down the sides and the bottom. And it's still a little too stiff. You see, it's kind of difficult to push this spatula through it. So I want to add a little more water. And then turn it up for about 15 seconds to get it really whipped together. Now you can see this is a much better spreadable consistency. So I'm just gonna set this aside. I'm gonna take a piece of plastic and cover this so it doesn't dry out, and then we will continue. All right, so to do this, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible for someone who's not a baker, so to say, so to say, so to speak, or whatever. Anyway, to start, you this is gonna be so much easier if you have some kind of rotating device, a turntable or a cake stand or something. I always put a non-skid pad on top of my turntable to prevent the cake from shifting around. And you'll really be able to do this with just a spatula. And when we're smoothing the cake, if you have a bench scraper that's flat on the bottom that doesn't have a handle sticking out on the bottom, you can use this. If not, we can do it with just a spatula. 
So to start, I'm gonna put on some gloves since I'm going to be handling the layers of the cake. I have a plastic bin here so I can put the extra icing in. And I'm gonna get my cakes. These cakes came refrigerated. I took them out of the refrigerator and let them sit out for an hour or two so the icing is soft and it's gonna be easy to scrape it off. Trying to hold this steady with my bottom hand and the top hand, I'm just gonna start scraping off all the icing down to the cake. Okay, now that I have the icing off of both of the cakes, I need to remove, there's two layers of cake here and it looks like there's some filling on the inside. So I'm gonna separate it, remove all the filling, so then I'll have four layers of cake. So I just have a cutting board here or something that you can rest the layers on. And you can easily lift it up, getting the spatula underneath. So really no icing stuck to the bottom, which is good. And now remove the filling from the middle on both cakes. Okay, now you have your four layers of cake. I'm actually going to use this cake board. So take the, the cakes off of the cardboard. And if you don't have a cake board, we can use these. We're gonna cover this. So you wanna get all of the icing off of here, wipe it down with a paper towel, and then we will make the cake board. Okay, now let's make the cake board. What I usually like to have three boards as my cake board, between three and five. However, if you don't have any of these on hand, just use the cardboard that came with the cake. It'll be a lot easier. Now to stack this, to make it a little more sturdy, if you can see, cardboard has lines that go across one way. As you can see, this one bent here. So to make it a little more sturdy, you want the vertical, one way to be vertical and one way to be horizontal. So it's not going to bend since you have the lines going the opposite way. It just makes it a little more sturdier. I'm putting the part that had the icing on it on the inside. And here I have a piece of aluminum foil. This is actually heavy duty aluminum foil. It, it's less likely to rip. If you only have regular aluminum foil, you just have to be really careful that you're not going to pull it and rip it. I've done it plenty of times, even with the heavy duty. I fold in the corners. It just makes it a little easier to wrap everything around. Place this down in the middle and then holding the cake board in the middle, I'm going to start pulling this around. I'm going to pull it down, flatten it, and then keep doing that. Pull it a little more, flatten it. You know, and keep moving it the whole way around the cake. This is where it will usually rip. If you pull too hard, you're gonna rip the foil. So just be really careful with it. I took my gloves off because I'm gonna be using tape on the back and I can't tape with gloves on. Now I have a roll of duct tape. I always use duct tape for this. You can really use any sturdy tape, I would use packing tape over scotch tape, but if that's all you have, then that can do. When I put the duct tape on, I'm gonna put it half on the foil, half on the board. So start putting it on the foil side, push down, and then I'm gonna pull it in towards me a little bit to make it a little tight, and then press it down. So I'm pulling it in and pressing it down, making sure you're not pulling too hard so you don't rip the foil.
and voila, now we have our cake board. Okay, so now I still have my turntable with the non-skid pad on it. I have my cake board here, my layers of cake, and I actually put, I made a little bit more icing and I put it all in this Tupperware container, this lock and lock, instead of covering the bowl with plastic, like I said earlier. So you want your icing, your layers of cake, and your cake board on a turntable if you have it, and your spatula. So let's start by putting a little icing on the cake board. This will help secure the bottom layer of the cake to the cake board. So putting that layer down. Try to center it on the cake. So just spin it around. Make sure that you have an even border the whole way. And then push down to secure it to the icing. Now I'm gonna take some icing on the spatula and put it on top of the cake. How much icing you use is gonna be personal preference. I like it to be uh, like a quarter of an inch thick, um, but if you want more icing, put a little more in there. Generally, I don't like to have my filling be more than a quarter of an inch thick. So spreading that all the way to the edges and trying to keep it even in the middle, like you want it flat the whole way across. Level is the word I'm looking for. And then repeat the process. So put this on top, try to make sure that, it's, it, that it is exactly on top. You see how it's hanging over a little bit on this edge? So I need to maneuver it so it's stacked directly on top of the other tier, the other layer. Press down. Rinse your hands and repeat the process. I'm kind of holding my spatula at an angle here and turn the turntable and it can help you level it off. I'm gonna put the top layer on. Press it down. The reason I press it down is because a lot of times cakes settle as they sit and this kind of helps to speed up the process a little bit. So it's not gonna settle after you ice the cake. I'm gonna bring back my other bowl of icing that I'm gonna throw away. This icing I'm gonna keep for future use. So what I'm gonna do now, holding my spatula straight up and down against the side of the cake and just start scraping off. Well, I'm not really scraping it off. I'm pushing it into the cake. So I'm just smoothing that icing that's hanging off, which is kind of making a crumb coat. We're gonna actually do another crumb coat before we ice the cake as well. But just scraping that off and putting the excess in the trash bowl. All right, now we wanna put a crumb coat on here before we put the final coat with the textured buttercream. So take a little bit of your icing. Now I like to use an offset spatula to ice. I use a small offset spatula. Some people use an icing tip in a bag and just squeeze it on there. Um, some people like to use big spatulas to do it. I just have been doing it like this for so long. This is the way I do it. If you are experienced and know how to ice a cake, you can ice it however you would like. I'm just explaining this for beginners. So take a little bit of the icing and you wanna do this in little sections. What you wanna make sure is that you press the icing against the cake and don't have any air bubbles formed behind the cake. So I'm pushing it down and kind of press it against the cake and then start to move it around. What you don't wanna do is press this against the cake and then lift it off and then push back down because you're gonna get a lot more crumbs. So once you press this down on the cake, just keep the spatula attached to the icing and start to smooth it around. So I'm bringing this all the way down to the very bottom of the board. And I do this in sections. So I'm gonna do a row around the bottom 
and then a row around the middle and a row on the top. The icing that I'm putting on here is about an eighth of an inch thick, not super thick. Okay, now that I did the bottom row, I'm going to do the same thing in the middle. Can you see how thin the icing is that I'm putting on there? It's not sticking off very far. It's about, it, I think that's an eighth of an inch or a quarter. It's about an eighth of an inch. It doesn't have to be exact. You just don't want it to be too thick. Now I'm going to do the very top of the cake. Now we're going to fill in the top. So same thing, taking a little bit of icing, pressing it against the side of the cake. The difference is in this, on this row, you want to have icing sticking up above the top of the cake because we're going to push it this way and get a really sharp edge. So making sure I'm still pressing it against the cake so there's no air bubbles and then spreading it around, making sure that some icing is sticking over the top. Now we want to even out the icing and smooth all of this out. If you have a bench scraper, this is much easier to do, but we can do it. I'm going to do it with a spatula in this because most people who don't really bake that much won't have something like this. If you use a bench scraper, what you do is dip it in the water. I have a hot, it's not boiling, but it's a very hot pot of water. You dip it in the water to heat up the metal. Take a paper towel, wipe off the water, hold this straight up and down against the side of the cake and push in. And then I'm turning the turntable with my bottom hand to start to even out the buttercream, okay? If you don't have a bench scraper, that is okay. We're gonna do this with the spatula. Dip the spatula in the water wipe off the water so the metal is hot hold this straight up and down don't have it on an angle in or out you want it straight up and down so you get straight edges push it against the side of the cake and start to smooth it out so repeat the process dip it in the water wipe it off hold it straight up and down i'm turning the turntable with my bottom hand and just really holding this straight up and down giving light pressure against the cake to smooth out the buttercream not pressing too hard Now we're gonna texturize this so it's okay if it's not perfect. Since the spatula isn't as tall as the cake, we're gonna to have to smooth it out up here as well. So if you have a tall spatula, this may work out better. This one is not offset and I hate when they're not offset. However, same thing, stick it in the water, heat up the metal, wipe it off, hold it straight up and down, but I'm gonna hold it at a 45 degree angle and try to smooth it out this way. So that's much easier than just using the little one. And a lot of people may have this in their house. So this way, it would just smooth the whole thing all at once. I'm holding it at a 45 degree angle, light pressure, holding it straight up and down, getting straight edges on the side of my cake. If you just have a little spatula, then you're going to just do this on the top part holding it straight up and down, trying to keep the edges straight. It's the trickiest part. So you don't, you don't want to push too hard and cause the cake to start coming, tapering in at the top. You want to try to keep an eye, like I'm kind of looking at it from the side and making sure that the sides stay even. And that is good. We are going to cover up all these imperfections. So don't worry if it doesn't look perfect. Next, I'm gonna take a paper towel. This is just a bounty paper towel. It's a select size So it came off in this, in this height. If you just have a regular paper towel, you're gonna to wanna to trim it to the size so you can put it around the cake. 
So what I'm gonna do, this paper towel has a diamond pattern on one side and the other side is kind of just like a dot pattern. So put the smaller pattern against the cake because this pattern is gonna transfer onto the cake. Put it against the side of the cake and I'm going, I'm going to do this left-handed to show you, and then I'm going to have to do it right-handed because I'm right-handed. But I'm putting this against the cake, and I'm just taking my fingers and rubbing up and down, trying to make sure that the sides are still even. I'm not pushing too hard or just to distort the shape of the cake. And then pull it off. You can see the pattern transferred. That's okay. We're just trying to get a perfect round shape. Moving the paper towel over to the part that I did not do yet, and repeat the process, rubbing your hands, your fingers up and down. We're gonna cover it, all the pattern that was transferred on here is gonna be covered so we don't have to worry about that. Now I'm gonna take my folded up paper towel and we're gonna get a sharp edge on here. Same thing, you always wanna warm up the metal in the hot water wipe it off with a paper towel. Now I'm gonna get even with this cake, so I'm gonna get down a little bit. What I wanna do, I wanna start pushing this icing that's sticking over the top of the cake straight back, and then I'm gonna turn my spatula this way and push it. So you'll see what I'm doing. You wanna make sure that you're not starting too low, because if you start too low, you're gonna push into the cake. You wanna make sure you're over the top of the icing. So just kind of look. Better to start too high and then you can adjust. I will show you. So if I start too high, I start to push straight back and there's a gap there. So you can lower your spatula a little more. I'm holding it perfectly horizontal. If you hold it on an angle, it's not gonna be even the whole way around. So that's why I like to get eye level, hold it horizontal, press it into the cake, start to push straight back and then down and I'm constantly putting the icing in the icing bucket, warm up the knife or the spatula, wipe it off, now continue. So I'm gonna put this end of the spatula on that line that I just made. I'm gonna use that line as a guide and put the other half onto the icing that I have to push back. So you line it up, press straight back and then down. Line up the line press straight back and down and do this the whole way around, getting the icing off the spatula, warming it up, wiping off the water and repeat the process. And if you do this right, by the time you get to the end, it's gonna be lined up in a straight line because I've been eye level with the cake, making sure I'm holding the spatula even the whole way around. So now that this is done, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for at least an hour. You want the butter and the icing to solidify, so then we could put the texture buttercream on the outside of this. So put it in the refrigerator for about an hour or so, and then we will continue. And now we are going to add the texture. You just wanna make sure that the icing has solidified, so you're not gonna mess up the shape of the cake as we do this next part. I have my icing here. Just gonna mix it up a little bit. Get your spatula, and what I'm gonna do is put a really, really thin coating of icing on the whole cake. Now you don't have to be perfect with this, we're just trying to get some icing on so we can get some texture on the cake. I'm actually gonna put some on the top as well. And then take your spatula and holding it straight up and down, just press it around. So it is gonna hang over the top a little bit. Get a piece of plastic and crumble it up and we're going to texturize it using the plastic. So I'm gonna hold it against the side of the cake. Again, I'm using my other hand to turn the turntable and I'm gonna hold this pretty much steady. Hold it against the side of the cake and start to make little swipes. I really should do this left-handed, but oh well. 
Actually, I will, so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna turn the turntable with my bottom hand and just start making little swipes. This makes a really pretty pattern in the cake. I really like doing this texture. You may find the buttercream starts to glob. So if you want to, you can fold this in on itself or go grab another piece and continue the process. So you don't want too much icing on the cake right now because you're kind of just really putting a pattern in it. You're really not trying to take too much icing off. If you have too much icing on, it's just going to make a mess. So that's why we put a thin layer of icing on when we do this. I'm gonna go get another piece. Same thing, crumble it up and start again. So just until you get the desired look to your cake. For the top of the cake, I'm just going to get rid of the excess that's hanging off. and then make the texture on the top of the cake. Just turning it in a circle. Grabbing a new piece of plastic as it gets gross and just keep refining this. And there you go, that looks pretty good. Now I just wanna clean up the cake board. So you go wet a paper towel and just try to wipe the excess icing away. If you want to finish off with a ribbon and make it pretty you can so lifting off the non-skid pad from underneath here it just the ribbon sets easier sits easier against the board if I don't have the non-skid pad on there I have a stick of non-toxic glue what I like to do is just press it against the side of the cake because the aluminum foil is sticking out a little bit here and I want it to be as flat as possible so the ribbon will be flat against the board Hold the cap down, press it against the cake board to really try to flatten the foil. And now this is gonna stick much easier. Since this is only two boards, I need only a thin ribbon. It's three eighths. So just take your ribbon, wrap it around the cake board to see how long it has to be. Make sure it overlaps a little bit and then just cut it off here. Now I'm going to take my glue stick and put glue around the perimeter of the cake board and on the whole strip of ribbon. This is disappearing purple, so this will turn clear. It's only purple so you can see where the glue is being placed. Find the front of your cake. There's always, I say, there's always a part that looks the prettiest and most symmetrical. So just turn it around, see what you want to be the front. And I like this the best, I think. So the back is gonna be right here. That's where I'm gonna start the ribbon. Pushing it against the side. And then I'm holding it with one thumb and pulling it with my other hand then push it against the side of the cake board and continue the whole way around. When you get to the end, take the part that's going to be overlapping and just make sure you put glue on that part of the ribbon that it's going to be touching. And then you can seal it. And now I can tell where the front of my cake is because the back is going to be where the ribbon meets. So I'm just gonna turn it around. Here's the front of my cake. Now I just wanna show some options for decorating. I, you can always go to a local craft store. If you have time, you can actually order a topper from Etsy or, or you know Amazon can even send you something pretty quick. Etsy usually takes a little while, but I just went to the local craft store and I bought this topper. So if this were to be a wedding shower or an anniversary cake or a wedding cake or, you know, whatever it would be. So you could put that, that in the top like that. Totally adorable. 
Wanted to give you some other options as well. If you are in a pinch, this is why I'm showing this option here. Because a lot of times people need a last minute cake and are going to have to do this at the last minute. So you may not have time to make decorations. I went online and this is my name and I just Googled Carolyn name, two separate words, Carolyn and name. And then I clicked on images and this picture came up and I've, I've done it for so many names. My name is not very popular the way that it's spelled, but it still came out that way. So for the most part, if the name isn't too unique, you should be able to Google it and find the name somehow printed in a funky little font like that. So if it's for someone's birthday, you could do their name. If it's not, if it's, if it's a Captain America theme, I just did for another example. You print out whatever pictures you would wanna put on the cake. These are not gonna to actually touch the cake, so I'm gonna use some packing tape, which really is not food safe. However, it's not gonna be on the cake, it will be okay. So I just basically wanna laminate this before I put it on the, on the lollipop sticks. If you have laminating paper, it may be easier so you don't have to do little strips. Again, I'm just doing this if you're in a pinch and need a quick decoration. Before I cut it out, I'm just gonna put the paper, ah, why can't I talk? I'm gonna put the tape over the name Press down to make sure there's no air bubbles. Flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. In the case of the Captain America, I'm gonna need two strips. Making sure the tape is on the outside of the picture. And then, if you're doing a strip next to another strip, try to line up the tape as close as possible without overlapping. At least on the front. I got a little wrinkle there. If you get a wrinkle, you can always grab a flat edge and try to push it out this way. Flip it over and do the same thing on the other side and then cut them out. flip them over make sure that they're straight up and down a little bit of tape and some lollipop sticks for the name since it's so wide I'm going to use two Put, putting one on either end and just taping the back and here you have some decorations that you can put on the top so you can just stick it in the top of the cake like so. Right. And there you have a couple different options, ways to decorate a, a cake, making it a little more special than just a bakery cake. So here you go. Here is your last minute cake that you were able to put together in less than three hours, including the time that I had to set in the refrigerator, which is not bad. I rearranged the love letters on here just because I think it looks a little better with a little more character, if you will, rather than just having them straight across the cake. You could do them on an angle too, whatever it would be. This cake looks like to me that it's about a seven inch round. The way as, as tall as it is, it looks like it'll probably feed between 18 and 20 people. And I will put that back in the refrigerator until about two hours before you're ready to serve it. So the icing has time to soften and it can come to room temperature because cold cake never tastes as good as room temperature cake. It's much more, it's much softer. And it, to me, it just tastes much better that way. If you prefer cold cake, then leave it in the refrigerator and take it out and eat it right away. Each cake was $15.99 at my local grocery store. So in total, the cakes were $32. The cost of the ingredients for the icing is probably $4 or so. And then you have all the little, the ribbon and, and the aluminum foil. But I would say you're able to make this whole cake for to feed $20, to feed $20, <laughs> to feed 20 people. Why do I always do that? 
I did that in another video, but anyway. You can make this whole cake to feed around 20 people for less than $50 and just a couple hours of your time. So if you're in a predicament right now where you need a cake, it's last minute, you don't want just a grocery store cake with buttercream flowers on it, get the cake, take the icing off and make it your own and it will still be beautiful and everyone will think you're so amazing because you made this beautiful cake. One more thing I wanted to say that I forgot to mention when I was making the icing, you can color that icing any color that you want. So if you want to color the icing, I can link icing colors below as well. Um, you want to add the coloring before you add the powdered sugar. So you mix the butter and the shortening and you can add the flavoring and then add a little bit of color and then put the sugar in. It makes it a lot easier to color the icing when you do it before you add the sugar. And I'm talking too much and it's late and I'm and going a little crazy. So I'm gonna stop rambling on. So I think that is it for now. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. And please like this video if you liked it. It really helps out my channel. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and you wanna see more videos like this. And you can follow me on social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram and I have my website. I will link everything below. Thank you so much for watching the video and I will see you on the next one. Bye.